Welcome back, Zero K fans. I remain Shadow Fury 33, your host. This remains the Zero K December 1v1 tournament, but it is a new thing the Grand Finals. The Grand Finals between Google Frog and Dime Friend on Tandem Craters, at least to start with. So that is going to be, uh, that's going to be what we have. Tandem Craters between the two of them, and this is, well, this is an ongoing match. I mean, the, the two of them have been going at it for basically this entire tournament. From at least, like, Swiss round six, I think. Somewhere in that area. That's where this whole thing started. And now it's just continuing. Getting into the grand finals. And we are going to have, I think, a pretty strong grand finals as a result. But first off, we are going to obviously be waiting for the players to set up. Getting their spots. Getting their factories. Klogabot factory for Google Frog and Dying Friend. Not sure what they're going to go for. The thing with this map is that, despite its size, it's one of those maps that, again, it's big, but it's kind of flat, and it kind of favors Cloaky. Google Frog, or Dying Frog has the right idea, because this center ridge, you can really get a lot of mileage off of as Cloaky. Especially in, the ridges in general you get a lot of mileage out of. Well, Google Frog going for rovers, they're going to have a bit of an easier time early on setting themselves up. But the thing is, once there's enough glaives on the field, it's going to be tricky for them to maintain the momentum, because, like I said, they can regroup on the hill. Vehicles cannot go up that hill. It's all purple. Actually, there's a slight way up here that there's... It's a very tricky way up the hill. Bots, however, just walk up it. Or across it. No problems whatsoever. Bit slower, but otherwise no big deal. So, there you go. It's actually really easy to set up. At this point, though, it is a question of whether or not Dimefriend lives that long, because while Dimefriend is in a nice position to defend themselves. It's also a question of whether or not Google Frog just sets up a lot of forces early on and just steamrolls them. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. I feel like they're just going to get... They're going to get the momentum off the glaives. As long as they're intelligent about using their glaives, they don't risk them too much. Yeah, they should be fine. There shouldn't be a massive problem dealing with anything Google Frog throws at them because glaives are great. Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. That crater's only spider bots. This crater over here with the Google Frogs in, that is accessible to everybody. But yeah, this is just spider and jump. So, good luck with that. Or terraform. Terraform is the other option. But, I mean, Dying Frame went for the Recon Commander, so they had jump. They were fine. But they also went for Cloakabot Factory. Which means that they're not going for jump off that. That and also, yeah, Google Frog does know this map quite well. Like, the time I'm talking about with... No, I'm talking about glaives and using them around the hill and really taking advantage of that. I'm saying that because I saw Google Frog do that. So, the Google Frog is going to be a tough competition on this map. It's going to be difficult. It's possibly doable. But Google Frog does know what they're doing here. And so far has managed to get a little bit of an advantage, attrition-wise. But then again, Dimefriend has managed to get quite a bit of an, quite a bit of an advantage, economy-wise, since the Recon Com meant they could easily take this crate over here. Whereas Google Frog has to terraform it. At the same time, though, Google Frog's doing a fine job defending their base. They just haven't quite managed to get the terraforms working. And again, ooh, oh, nice Mason kill. So at least for Dying for sake, one of the Masons did go down, slowing down the expansions, and another? No, the Dark manages to stop the Metal Extractor from being destroyed, but still, that is. Yeah, yeah resignable here. That has got to be painful. Losing the Mason, again, that's early expansions being destroyed. And given that Google Frog is as far behind as they are economically, that's even more important. At this point, though, Dimefront has not managed to really rack up much of an army. They've got stuff, but it's not much. The one thing I want to see is whether or not Dimefront is able to maintain that over the course of this entire game. Like, like I said... The late game part is more that you can stream out glaives. You can get a lot of them. You have more than enough build power. You have more than enough economy. You get like one every three or four seconds. That's where it becomes a big deal. You don't have to save them so much, but early on, you kind of do, and Dying Friend hasn't. So that's the one tricky bit. That's the one Dying Friend has. The one thing Dying Friend kind of has to deal with right now. But at the same time, we do have. We do have at least a bit of a win from Dying Friend here. But again, Google Frog's the one that really needs the win at this point. Actually, Google Frog really needs the win at this point. And Google Frog's getting it. 
Now, at the same time, though, Diamond Friend, with that geothermal power plant, they have the power infrastructure. They don't quite have it set up for overdrive yet, but it's not going to be long. Like, they could easily have that happen. Actually, they probably want to as well. Like, get a few more power plants. And there it is. There's the wind gens. Connecting those up. Giving Google Frog even, or sorry, Diamond Friend even more of an economic advantage. Especially considering that they already have a massive economic advantage since they took that so early. And now that overdrive again, just again, 10 metal per second advantage. That is an additional factory over their opponents, effectively. That is a caretaker over their opponents. I mean, the constructor coming in here, or contra coming in here, that's going to likely be used for. No, never mind. Not going to be used for rebuilding, but they do have the airplane plants. So that's something. So there's that extra factory. There's the extra factory that Dying Friend earned. Or at least in theory, earned. Google Frog has even things out a bit. But even then, Dying Friend has just earned so much more money. As long as they don't excess it, they're good. They're still fine for now if the excess is so close. Oh, but at least... Okay, they have the Conjure in there. They're not going to excess. They're good. And they have enough energy. They're not going to excess from that either. So they're able to get those Glaives out. And this is where I was talking about. This is the thing I, mean, I was talking about with the Glaives. This is the stream. The stream is starting. Well, I mean, it's it was starting. It seems to have petered out a little bit. But yeah, put them on repeat build. Keep going. And that's exactly what's happening. Diamond Friends got an army set up. Bit surprised they're going for the secondary forces as well, because this map is very big. It's difficult to make that work. But then we have had a few big maps this tournament. The players have gotten more used to it for this tournament, and also they're probably just used in general. So we've seen that heavier forces, slower forces, do work fine on maps this size. Still, though, the Glaives are going to be the absolute main part of this entire army. As Google Frog is still going entirely for the Scorchers, and both players have gotten airplanes. Or is going for airplanes. I mean, Google Frog is a bit behind in the airplane game. They are going to take another minute, no, half a minute or so to build it up. Whereas Dying Frame, they're all set up. They just need to actually queue some planes. Everything else is all good. If they get the planes up, then they have the production going. They have loads of metal. They stop accessing. And they can take full advantage of the economy advantage they've had for a while now. So with this, it's going to be... Well, it's going to be Dime Friend's game to lose right now. The advantages are strongly in their favor. They have Glaives coming in to help deal with all this expansion. The Scythe already dealt with a lot of the expansion in the back, and it's still there. Dime Friend's still got loads of room to maneuver with that. There's not much that can really stop that Scythe. And with the Glaives coming in, that provides more pressure, forcing Google Frog to play more defensive. And this was... I mean, this is a big deal, really, when you think about it. Like, Dying Friend essentially has nothing contesting them. They have all this economy. They have nothing coming in that's stopping them. The thing is, it's really hard for Google Frog to stop them. They need to use an Impaler in order to have any chance. Or maybe... Maybe a bear? Or slash Wolverine. The form, uniformly known as Wolverine. That might be an option, maybe. But even getting close enough is going to be a pain in the butt. With either case. And most of the economy, because it's in the craters, there's only so much you can do. Like, I... I can see why vehicles were picked. I just don't know why Google Frog picked vehicles. At any rate, if this, this continues, I mean, Dime Friend, they're kind of ahead. So, if it continues like this, it could indeed be Dime Friend taking a 2-0. Or at least taking the first match. Hmm. The only thing I'm thinking of, though, is if we have... Now we see that when the Ravens coming in, Swift's coming in. I'm not sure how much Dime Friends going to be able to take air control. They do have a lot of Swifts, however, and that is a big deal. The fact is they have more production capacity. They can get more Swifts at a faster amount of time. So I'm not really sure what they can do, because honestly, the Swifts, the, the Swifts will ultimately win out. Unless, I guess, we see... Well, what are the Hawks called now? Banshees? Rafters. Yeah, Banshees are now Locusts, what I'm thinking. Raptors. If you have Raptors come in, they could deal some damage here, but even then, I don't see this happening. I just don't. Like, Google Frog's not building them. They're building Swifts. And right now, the Swift game is going to be won by Dime Friend because Dime Friend just has more money. Although, admittedly, good tactics off of Google Frog there. Pulling back and going in, letting the missiles do most of the work. But, again... Oh, actually, not again. No! Despite the production capacity, Google Frog's tactics have won out. They've really won the day. 
So Google Frog currently having air control, and Dime Friend's gonna have to rebuild to that. Possibly more Swiss, possibly some Raptors. Hard to say which. Either way, though, Google Frog is gonna have a field day just figuring out what's going on. Like they they have an opening. They can stop these bombers. They can kind of stop the bombers. I mean, the bombers are more of an issue right now for Dime Friend than Google Frog. And also, ooh, nice. They can just completely lock things down. I mean, we don't even see any gremlins or anything. There's hardly any anti-air stopping these swifts. I mean, there's a little bit, but not much. At the very least, Google Frog has now gained full knowledge of what Dime Friend's up to. Dime Friend, on the other hand, not quite gaining that knowledge. Going for Hovercraft, however, and I'm not sure why. I'm assuming for Halberds that they can just power through, but honestly, I don't know. I mean, the one thing is, Hovercraft, you get some fast units. You get some really good anti-air. Actually, you get some really good anti-air. You get flails. That would make a lot of sense. We'll see what happens when Dimefriend decides to queue units, but flails would make the most sense, considering the choice. It's one of the best anti-air units in the game. So I can see why you'd switch to factory just for that. Especially given that Dimefriend is very clearly taking control of the air. Like, it was really a tactical game, or a tactical consideration, but it worked. Like, the way they played that tactics, make sure the Swiss were all together, and then go in with the missiles. Well done. But now Dime Frame, they have a hovercraft platform, they don't have anything queued. I don't know why Dime Frame does not pre-queue. I really don't. But they are indeed going for flails. Actually, going for a combination of things. Going for, wow, I guess they're making it the main army at this point. Interesting choices. But at this point, we are seeing a lot coming in for this... <sighs> We are seeing a lot coming in with the army of Dimefriend. Dimefriend's army is still in a strong position. Yes, they don't have a lot of anti-air. They have some. The flails coming in are going to be a problem. But even without much anti-air, they still have enough. So with that, it's going to be a bit of a problem for Google Frog to get back in here. Dimefriend, while they were on the back foot a little bit, they still had a strong position to fall back to. And now that they're able to push Google Frog in... Despite Google Frog's economy being roughly even, I mean, Dime Friend's got the advantage. They got the Sice in there, they have more units up. They are losing a fair few to the Rippers, which is a bit of a problem. But at the same time, they have the units to deal with those as well. So it's not like. It's not like Dime Friend's in a really bad position. However, they aren't in as good of a position as they were. Google Frog did manage to even out the economy a bit. And there's not a whole lot that Dimefriend has that's really all that relevant compared to that. Because Dimefriend right now, they've got, like, they have some value. Their value actually is quite a bit higher. Okay, it's 5k higher. So they still have a lot to work with. Still have 4k more metal used. And that actually, as this continues, we're seeing that is paying off. Most of that is in Swifts, but that means air control. That means air control goes to Dimefriend. And while ground control is also kind of going to Dimefriend, there's not much that Google Frog has for themselves. Like, air control is definitely dying for now, just by sheer numbers. Like, tactics just aren't relevant right now when you have the flails and you have the sheer numbers of swifts. There's only so much that you can do. And with that, I don't know what Google Frog would have to deal with this on above anything else, and neither does Google Frog! So that is round one going to Dime Friend. Well done, Dime Friend. And yeah, like I said, just the sheer amount of metal difference. Like, the fact that Dime Friend had a metal advantage for as long as they did. And it was only for a brief period that Google Frog even got close. That was the biggest difference maker. And really, that was enabled by the fact that Dime Friend had the Recon Commander. If Google Frog had gone Recon Commander, I could have seen that going very similarly for both players. But, yeah, this map, you just kind of have to have the ability to jump. One way or the other. And we didn't see that before. So anyway, that was round one. Oh, right, I should probably actually mention that there was game one. That was game one. I don't know what game two is going to be on. Because that is up to Google Frog. Whatever Google Frog's favorite map is, that is the map they get to play. And I'm going to wait for that because Google Frog, I don't know if they know offhand what map they'd want to play. Hmm. Oh, wow, I just... Okay, I mean, people point out in the chat that it's like, basically, Dimefriend won from the second they came in. Oh, Firepluck. 
Point out, dying for more from the second they came in, because, yeah, like, I mean, it helped. Jump Recon Com helped a lot. Hmm. But at any rate, the... I mean, the thing is, I'm not sure what Google Frog's map is going to be. What is Google Frog's map? What What are you going to go with? Are you going to go with something... What is Google Frog... I was thinking, like, Google Frog... Google Frog tends to play sort of a more slightly more microfocused game, but he's pretty good at anything. So, I'm not really sure what he'd go for. Like, the thing is, the only maps available are the ones we saw before, and Cold Snap, Desert Plateaus, Obsidian, Isle of Grief, and Sever. Given the choices, I... I don't know. Isle of Grief, maybe? No, Fairyland. Okay. Fairyland is Google Frog's choice. That makes sense considering the size of the map, considering that Google Frog probably wants to have, like I said, more of a micro-focus to work with. Although, at the same time, Fairyland is one of those maps that's kind of tricky. I mean, Fairyland is round four, and we saw that became something that fell apart rapidly there. It was very easy to turn that map around if you're not careful. So, I'm curious what will happen here with two players that are likely not to have e-stalls and likely not to just go for pure commander builds. Because, you know, they might do so anyway. It's like, that's, that's still a thing that can happen. I kind of doubt it will, considering the stakes, but eh, you never know. It might be. That might do it. That might be a thing they decide is worth doing. I somehow doubt it, though. Also, I really wish that this... Maybe I should do it. I don't want to do it myself, but I kind of wish that this would actually store the position and size data when it's moved, and then it's use a hard-coded value for the center of the screen. Because... Or a different value for the center of the screen, because as it is, a bit of a pain in the butt. Just slightly. But anyway, Google Frog going for hover for rovers. And Dianfroind. What are you going for, Dianfroind? Shield bot, cloaky bot, hovercraft, spiders, gunships, strider. Just no plop strider. I'm not sure what exactly they would go for, but eh. I mean, people are thinking, no, shields would win this. And, I mean, shields are strong on this map, but we are seeing Cloaky instead. Save strats with Cloaky. So, dive front with the Cloaky and with... I mean, very typical opening. Actually, no, not typical opening. Very economic opening. Going straight off the Conjurer, while on the other hand, Google Frog being aggressive. Dart Scorcher before even getting a worker. Not atypical, but at the same time... That's only Google Frog. Like, that's the thing. Only Google Frog is going for that. Dying Throwing went for Cloaky, went for the Builder. They're going to be on the back foot militarily. The Glaive should be able to stop the Dart, no problem. But Google Frog is not going to have to worry about getting attacked. Dying Throwing is far more worried about playing the long game, playing the safe game. They want to win this. They don't want to cheese it. They don't want to take advantage of their position as being the leading player to just fire off, try to win the game quickly. They are going to play it as long as they need to. I mean, the thing is, bear in mind, just from a personal player psychology perspective, Google Frog is tired. Google Frog is in Australia where it's, I think, currently... Let's see, we... It's about, I think, midnight, 1 a.m. for them right now. Like, somewhere between 10 and 12. So it's late in the evening. Whereas for Dying Throwing... It's a little past lunchtime. I think it's 3 in the afternoon. Or 3.30 in the afternoon. So Dying Throwing is in a much fresher state overall. I mean, granted, they've both been playing quite hard and likely are tired from that. But Dying Throwing is in a fresher state overall just on account of being awake for less time. So Google Frog might be in a bit of a tight spot because of that. But at the same time, they're doing okay right now. They're still doing fine as far as playing goes. I mean, they're able to manage this and... Dime Friend 
I mean, Diamond Friend again going for that same, exact same Stardust that we saw them bef go for before. Or at least I saw the Stardust here before. I'm trying to remember if it was actually Diamond Friend we watched on that map. But at any rate, the Stardust in that position, still not a bad spot. I feel like it was. I feel like it was Diamond Friend versus Zanier for some reason, but whatever. Anyway, the Stardust there. Smart option. Make sure that you can't have trivial harassment over to that section of the map. At the same time, though, Dime Friend is a little bit low on units, I would think, because Dime Friend's unit value... Yeah, it's down by a couple hundred. Like, basically, Google Frog has one more Scorcher than they should, or Dime Friend has two or three fewer Glaives than they otherwise would. But that all is going to come down to this one fight, because, you know, Lotus... Again, not... Okay, the Lotus isn't done. But, at the same time, the Glaives providing up for the distraction. They should be able to get rid of at least one of the Scorchers, but no, even with a flank... They get rid of one of the Scorchers, but only one, the other one managing to survive, and five Glaives go down in the process. So, it's not that simple. It's really not going to be that easy, and Google Frog is actually maintaining and managing a growing economic advantage. As, I mean, they have seven metal percent. No, that's Reclaim. But still, they have a growing metal advantage just on account of having built more metal, and also used more metal. Diaphragm still has a lot of metal in storage. Whereas Google Frog has used most of it, and about 500 more to them than a Dime Friend. So at this point, I'm not sure if Dime Friend is planning on going for any production assistance anytime soon, because Google Frog, they haven't done that. They've just been building a lot more in the back, and also keeping a lot more alive. I, the biggest thing is keeping things alive. I don't know, but that was metal used. No, sorry, metal used is just, they've been, Google Frog's been building more in the back lines. Dime Friend, on the other hand, not building a whole lot yet, but mostly because the commander has been a little bit out of position. Moving forward, trying to expand aggressively. And I don't know if this is going to work. In fact, I think Diamond Friend's commander is at risk of death. Strongly at risk of death. The Diamond Friend's commander is going to die. There is no way out of this because these scorch like four Scorchers, even with the Lotus support, that is too many Scorchers. I mean, Diamond Friend's dig is not enough. Diamond Friend losing their commander that early could very well throw the match. That's... It's unclear... Because Dimefront still had an advantage going into that. Or no, they had, no, never mind, they had a disadvantage. They had a unit value and metal use disadvantage. Yeah, they're actually not doing especially well, especially given that they just lost a bunch of metal. Like, this excess is the commander dies, lost all storage. So, 300 metal was lost, and that was a huge chunk of the difference between metal used and metal produced. So, Dimefront is in a tight spot right now. And Google Frog's just taking advantage of this to build them as best they can. I mean, if Google Frog takes this, that'll be the first win against Dime Friend. I... I mean, hey, it'd be good to have a fairer match, I suppose. Google Frog having a chance at this, because Google Frog was losing against Dime Friend every single match. And this is a difference. Though, again, it's not over yet. It's just... Dime Friend's gonna have a hard time. They're gonna have an uphill battle. If they can get rid of these Scorchers once or twice then it'll even out of it. Especially if Dime Friend's able to maintain or manage to get an economic parity. Advantage, it's a little bit hard to ask for an advantage at this point, but parity is possible. Still, though, the question is, is that even going to happen? Because Google Frog's got a lot of control over the map. Now, granted, Dime Friend's able to put some pressure here and there, but the question remains, how is Dime Friend going to be able to turn that pressure here and there into economy? The answer, a few con conjures here and there. Building up some metal extractors here and there. Certainly not a bad option overall. Still, though, without the commander, it's a lot harder to do that defensively, which is requiring Dying Friend to play more defensive, allowing them to obviously set up a bunch of offensive units next to them, like setting up glaives and glaives and reavers next to the conjurers to make sure that the conjurers don't die to stray scorchers. And even then, the conjurers could still die to the stray scorchers just because, well, there are a lot of scorchers, not a lot of glaives. And this scor these Scorchers here, they're not going to be deterred that long. Although apparently long enough, in fact, that is going to leave an opening for Dime Friend to get more Metal Extractors built up. Which does mean Dime Friend can very well potentially get back in this match. Though the more defenses they build, the more Google Frog gets an economic advantage. More Metal used for Google Frog. At this point, 1,500 Metal. And similarly, 1,500 Metal unit advantage. There's only so much that you can do with the static defenses, and it's clearly not quite enough, and I get why Diamond Friend's doing it, because ultimately, they, that's all they really have. But at the same time, they're not getting metal in the process. I get the care, but 
there's no money. But finally, they're getting some money in the safer locations on the map, like this area south here, which hasn't been attacked yet. There's money there. There they expanded to first dead, but got some profit. And over in the northwest, they're finally managing to get that payoff, and that will be much better defended. But even then, six Scorchers is going to be a problem, to put it lightly. The southeast is really the only spot that hasn't been harassed so far, and it is still going to get attacked. It will be defended properly, but again, Google Frog will know it exists, and then it will come in. And in case people are wondering, I cannot see the drawings on stream. I honestly just delete them. Like, I, I have no map marks on all the time. So drawings don't show up on stream. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and draw. It will not show up. Or at least it won't if I've already turned that off. It sometimes will occasionally briefly. And then I turn it off when I notice. Still, though, this is... Uh, man, this is a tight spot for Dying Friend. I, They're not that low in economy. It's just because they have like a 8k deficit in terms of unit value. That's where I'm thinking I'm not sure what they have as options. Like... Oh, no, 3k deficit. Never mind. Still bad. But it's not completely insurmountable. And the Glaives coming in here might actually be able to deal some damage, maybe? I don't know. I mean, this is... It's always a matter of tactics when it comes to Glaive versus Scorcher, and at this point, those Northern Glaives did not do a great job. But the Southern Glaives, not so much. Still, though, the south side of the map is at least a bit of a bulwark for Dimefriend. They might be able to hold onto that long enough to be able to push in. If they manage that, they might actually be able to maybe get a way back in this match. But yeah, Google Frog, just this wall of Scorchers, it's like 2,000 metal worth of Scorchers. That's the real issue. If that can be dealt with, which it can't thanks to that Thunderbird. Oh, man. I mean, to be fair... Almost a bait. The Reavers in the back could potentially pull this around, but I don't see it. It's going to get some value, but it's not enough. Nowhere near the value needed in order to maintain that and possibly turn it around. I mean, the Reavers doing a fine job, but it's just not enough. I think that's game. I do not see any way out of this for Dimefront for anymore. If they hadn't had the Thunderbird happen, that would have been a that would have been a fight. It would have been a great fight because it would have been in front of the Scorchers and the Scorchers could have collapsed on them, but it would have at least been a fight. But with that Thunderbird, it went to a, it went from a fight to a slaughter, and Google Frog took takes map two. So of course the question is, what's map three? The answer is whatever time friend likes, because that's how the match works. I mean, again, loser picks. So that is going to be the next map, and it looks like Adansonia very rapidly is the choice, because it's a good map. So time friend wants. Big ol' C, with a lot of defensive sections, and actually a lot less defensive sections, all things considered. I can't say I disagree. I mean, I could see that working out well for them. But, and Sonia, I think they actually, no, they didn't, that was Otago they won on. Against Google Frog. Add and Sonia is when we saw what Zinnia and and I am sorry, I'm very tired. Zinnia and Pokedrool. What they were up to. Anyway, Dying Friend starting out with Hovercraft Factory. Oops. And the Google Frog hasn't quite chosen yet. Hasn't even chosen a star position yet. But hey, that's fine. I mean, just get a star position, set it up, and then go. But Dying Friend with Hovercraft Factory, that's an interesting choice. Starting out with Hovers against Google Frog. That is risky. My hovercraft is a choice that I can kind of see why it's made. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd make amphib on this map, although admittedly the shallow water isn't as big of a deal. But hey, so does... And Google Frog also going for hovercraft. So both players have the same thing in mind. Build some daggers, possibly build some halberds. Build some scalpels eventually. Or wait, no, that's changed. Hasn't. No, it hasn't! Hovercraft! Unrenamed! Unlike me, it has survived the renames. But, that being said, what are they going to go for? Dimefern going for a lot more daggers. They have their quill up. They got the daggers. Google Frog going for the daggers as well, but a little bit later, and I think... Well, actually, the first dagger was earlier. The second dagger is a bit later. Dimefern is on the defensive now. 
I don't know if they realize this, but that is the tempo. Although Google Frog clearly expecting Dimefrain is going to counter harass as well, and that's not happening. Dimefrain realizing they probably are on the defensive. They know they built their work first. Likely they're going to have to wait. And that is exactly what they do, but Dimefrain, I believe, caught sight of Google Frog for Google Frog's forces. Which means, of course, that Dimefrain knows Google Frog's also going to hover. Which means that Google Frog might actually get rather... Well, I don't know if we're going to see Mace come in, or it's going to be a bunch of daggers fighting daggers. I mean, Dimefrain is clearly confident they don't have to worry about the dagger attacking anything. And to be fair, they kind of don't. Like, the dagger's on its own not going to deal much damage, especially when there's a defensive dagger. Especially especially when the defensive dagger is alongside the tower. There's only so much that you can do with that. Because daggers deal a lot of damage, and it's very front-loaded. But the fact that it's front-loaded means that you need to have a lot of daggers in order to be able to do much damage against anything remotely entrenched. Because otherwise, the dagger will fire off one shot, die, and then the damage dealt will be repaired. So it doesn't matter. Instead, the way to go is to fire off as many as you can, and I just realized I have sound on. Sorry, guys. But yeah, at this point, again, Dimefrain able to maintain an early economic lead. Google Frog going very forward with their economy as well, and I don't see Dimefrain's assault here working out too well. I don't think they know that Google Frog's commander is this far forward. I mean, they got the radar. Gonna be able to deal some damage. now. Okay, now they know what the Google Frog's commander is. I mean, if they get a few halberds up, like, switch over to halberds. Just build a bunch of those. Send them over to the commander. Kill the commander. You're good. Problem, of course, is how you do that. And also, why are you fighting Google Frog on hovers? Because Google Frog is a very strong hover player. But hey, they might find a way. Who knows? I mean, Google Frog is a strong hover player, but Dying Friend at this point has won three matches out of four between the two of them. So it's a question of how this is going to ultimately work out. And it's a tough answer because, again, Google Frog is a strong hover player. They do have their daggers up. They have them well positioned as well, just in case anything comes at them. While Dying Friend, do they even know that their daggers are there? Yeah, they have some idea, but... Okay, they have ideas now. I don't know if they know about all the daggers, though. That being said, again, though, Dying Friend with a 5 metal per second advantage that's growing quite quickly compared to Google Frogs. And Dying Friend also managing to get a little bit of an advantage here with the forces. Just a little bit. Getting a value off of the hovercraft, off of the daggers. Finding that Google Frog does not have anything expanding over to the northeast. Same with Dying Friend finding that the southwest is also similarly unexplored. So, really, or unexploited at least. So really, Dimefriend is at a slight advantage. Mostly they're managing to get a lot of hits off on these daggers. Uh, they're getting a lot of straggler daggers, which, that's, that is going to be a problem. Going forward, that's going to make it difficult for, Dime, for Google Frog to get back, because economic advantage, as well as attrition advantage, is, obviously that's what you want, that's how you win. And Dimefriend's got both. The only thing they don't have is a production advantage, which Google Frog also doesn't quite have yet. Like, Google Frog is on 10 production, or 10 build power, as is Dimefriend, though. Dimefriend looks like, yeah, they've got that sorted. They've, they've got the workers for that. Not even going to build characters, just going to get some quills up, use those instead, get a bunch of daggers, and then use all those to rip apart Google Frog's forces as best as possible. And again, stragglers. Get rid of the stragglers. That's really effective for Dimefriend. Every time they do that, there's an extra few hundred metal that works in their favor. And a slight army lead as a result. It's not huge. I mean, later in the game, that won't matter as much, but it will add up. At least for now. It, I mean, it does allow the Dimefrain to have a back army defending as well as this frontal army that's going forward and just checking things around. That's just the fact that they have two raider groups is a big deal, enabled by the fact that they've been playing relatively carefully. They have been playing relatively carefully. Now they're just trading that all in to deal with a couple of metal extractors. And I'm more or less in agreement with that. A little bit risky, but they have enough economy now that they can't afford to do that. And Google Frog coming in with another straggler dagger, which could and does go down. While the rest of Google Frog's army is definitely more organized than Dime Friends, Dime Friends small raider groups have been doing a massive amount of damage, getting rid of daggers here and there, giving Google Frog a slight disadvantage on the attrition on top of the disadvantage they already have in economy, and especially with the metal extractors that were destroyed. That is also a massive blow. So as it stands, Dimefriend is definitely playing more the the Raider game. They're playing more the game of find weak points, hit them. While Google Frog is clearly on the defensive, trying to find where the daggers are and get rid of them as best as possible while building up a dagger army. 
Now, however, Google Frog with the mace. Google Frog with the mace, dying for continuing with the daggers. And if they see the mace, I don't know if they're switch. We might see Halberds. We might see. I mean, Halberd's really about it, honestly. We might see a counter mace, I suppose. But that's the thing, is, you know, what what do you do with that? I'm not really sure the answer is, considering that, really, it's a question of positioning right now. The mace is out of position. Like, thoroughly out of position. It's going to be coming into position reasonably quickly. But the daggers should be able to just deal with all these metal extractors without too much issue. Like, before the reload time becomes an issue. Yep, metal extractors, quills down. The daggers can just leave. They can't... The lotus is a bit too high. It's out of dagger range. But that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Dime Fern, although they did lose a bit of advantage in terms of the attrition, that just secures their economy advantage. There's nothing rebuilding that for at least 30 seconds. At least. There's no other workers going in there. It'll be at least a minute before that's rebuilt. So Dime Fern's got an extra, 40, well, an extra 17 metal per second advantage for at least a minute. So, I mean, do the maths on that. That's about... 650 metal. I mean, that's amazing. Or even doing that right. No, no, not 650. What am I saying? No, 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 no. It's more like 900. Yeah, like they've got 900, 1,000 metal advantage just from that kill alone over the course of the next minute. And I mean, Google Frog's trying to even that out a bit, but still, that is a huge advantage that'll be built up. And now Dime Friends continue to expand. Dime Friends continue to build up their army. They still have enough daggers that they can have these forces of half a dozen to a dozen roaming around the map, dealing with stray daggers here and there, even contesting the mace. Getting rid of the mace. I mean, at great cost, mind you, and at the cost of a couple of quills at the top line, but st or the front line. But still, that's one such group. And they got about three of them. Now, the one over there, another one hanging out up front. Actually, they have two now. They lost the third just to that mace. But still, they're able to put Google Frog on the run on a factory that I figured would be more to their advantage. So, Dime Frame, well done. The use of the economic advantage is working out amazingly well for you. Still, though, at this point, the map is more or less being split in half. Google Frog has managed to rebuild, has managed to get those expansions back up. So, again, that minute or so of advantage, it's over. But that's still enough. That's still a lot to work with. The fact that those daggers died is almost irrelevant. Like, essentially, the fact that the daggers died didn't really matter in just on their own, because they were worth about as much as Dynefern was getting all over Google Frog in that minute. But also, the mace died. So in terms of attrition, it was still worth it. In terms of unit roll, it was definitely worth it. And now the scalpels are out, which I don't know why I didn't remember they existed, because they're definitely the counter to mace. The maces aren't going to have as easy a time either. The one downside, of course, though, being that Google Frog having switched to air is going to be a slight inconvenience until flails get up. Because, again, flails. Or until enough swifts get up. Either way. But Google Frog, again, going for heavy air superiority right off the bat. They went for heavy flails. They, or sorry, heavy swifts. They know that there's a possibility of this stuff. I'm a bit surprised Dime Friend is not going for flails. And my surprise is short-lived, seeing as they are indeed going for flails, because you're playing hovercraft. Of course you go for flails. Like, as is Google Frog. Like, we saw in the last match... Going for hovercraft specifically to get flails. So, good plan. Or not the last match, the one in Ravage. Wait. No, it wasn't Ravaged. It was... No, oh, whatever. No, it was Tandem Craters. Yeah, the first match. The game one of the series. We saw the exact same thing. But just for flails. At this point, we're seeing definitely why. The flails getting rid of all the Google Frog Swifts. Wiping out Google Frog's air control pretty well. But at the same time, Google Frog has the same tools. Google Frog's gonna have flails of their own. Though it's a bit slower now because of the way the economy is set up, because of the fact they actually don't have a whole lot of caretakers at their base. Like, the production capacity for Dime Fern is way higher than that for Google Frog. Like, Google Frog has about 30 build power between both factories. Dime Fern has 60. Dime Fern has almost no fear of, exp of running out of metal. Actually, 65 with the builder. So... Dimefrain's good. They have the energy, they have the build power. Google Frog has neither. So Google Frog is starting to excess, actually. And they are desperately getting the energy as best they can. But it's still a matter of build power, which they don't currently have. So at this point, Dimefrain is still going to be able to field a larger and increasingly large army, as Google Frog is just slowly falling apart due to the lack of funds. 
Like as mentioned before, Google Fox seems always a bit more comfortable on maps that are a bit more micro-focused, maps that reward tactics just a touch more. They have macro play, but Dying Friend's clearly just that bit more comfortable with macro play than Google Frog. So, given that, I don't see Google Frog having much of an issue here. Sorry, I don't see Dying Friend having much of an issue here getting through this and turning this map around, or turning this map to their favor even more so, because they've kind of been in the head this whole time. I'm not really sure there's any point in this match where Dying Friend has been on the back foot for more than maybe 30 seconds. Now, especially now with all this damage coming in here, I mean, Dying Frame just can take any section of the map right now. The only problem is the Swifts are causing issues. Like, there are a lot of Swifts, 15 of them. It will be a win for, Dying Fr for Google Frog if they move in with those, but it almost doesn't matter because the Daggers can just move in and get rid of the Metal Extractors, and that just increases Dying Frame's lead. And while, yeah, we are seeing an Assault Group coming over to the Southeast, that's... Actually, that could be... That could be a problem, come to think of it. That Assault Group, it will run into the... Well, the combination Faraday, Lotus, and Stardust, but even then... Yeah, that's actually kind of scary for Dimefriend if the Assault Group attacks, but Dimefriend is... Oh, wait, are they well aware of it? No, that's Google Fox Plane. Dimefriend has some knowledge of it, but not much. Advanced Radar, at least, is going to help a bit, but still, like, that is the scary thing that a Thunderbird to worry about, and Thunderbird not managing to get in in time! Nothing opened up. I mean, clearly they were expecting an army here, and there's nothing. Dimefree did not expect an attack on this side whatsoever. So, yeah, a bit of a shame there that Thunderbird actually ended up being useful more against Google Frog than for them. But Dimefree's commander is still about to go down! There's nothing really stopping this. Lightning Gun is doing a fine job defending, and it will at least help... Put a bit more attrition on the Google Frog's force before Dying Friend's commander inevitably goes down. And that means Dying Friend doesn't have as much storage. But they were prepared for this, actually. They had storage already. Like, they were good. They had their storage. They still have a large army. They have a massive retaliation force here. And the Swifts were out of position to help deal with the retaliation. So Google Frog losing a lot of units just to the Swifts, and then more so to the Phoenixes. I don't even think the Scalpels are going to survive all these assaults. And with that, Dimefriend still has a 15 or so metal per second advantage. I said before, you know, the minute of 15 metal per second advantage is going to be a thousand. Well, it's been six or seven minutes. There's about 6,000 metal that Dimefriend has that Google Frog doesn't as a result of that advantage. A lot of it is in units as well. So ultimately, Google Frog is running a massive deficit can't easily fight between the two teams, and Penetrator's there for Dimefriend on top of everything else, on top of the Halberds, on top of the Maces, and Dimefriend's basically got everything covered. I'm not sure, other than proper use of Scalpels, what Google Frog has planned. Because Dimefriend, they got the air, or a lot of the air, they've got the ground almost for sure, they don't have a commander, that's the one thing, and the Thunderbird is definitely a pain in the butt. That is a problem. But at the same time, Dying Friend doesn't need to win immediately. Google Frog is still, again, very behind. They're still, well, not very bad. They're still 12 metal per second behind, which is still quite a bit behind. So it, the thing is, like, it's just. Uh, getting. Getting to that point is. Uh, getting past this point, rather, for Google Frog is gonna be tricky. If they get this front army, that's gonna be a good start. But it, again, on top of the economy advantage, Dime Friend still has a 4,000 metal attrition advantage. So it's just getting... The, the gulp... The gap is getting wider and wider. And Google Frog hasn't really found a whole lot to use to try to bridge it. I mean, they have some reclaim, and that is definitely going to help. But Dime Friend has more reclaim. Like, yeah, there's there's stuff. There's, there's this field. It's 2,500 metal. Dime Friend's got this and this and this. Dying Friend's got like 4,000 metal worth of reclaim that's readily available to them. So Google Frog still doesn't have that much. But Google Frog's not throwing in the towel yet, even though, again, they've lost a lot of other stuff over this north or the, yeah, the northeast. Bunch of halberds looking pretty ready to hit something. Looking like they want something to die. And they're halberds, so they can push in and make something die if they want to. They're very, I mean, they're hardly armored when they're not shooting, at least, but... Yeah, they can make something die, and actually, this penetrator is going to be that thing that Google Frog's halberds make die. 
But Dying Frame, again, still has that advantage, and good thing to kill the Penetrator. That's still a lot to work with. The fact that you don't have that pesky laser artillery dealing with everything. But even then, just the sheer amount of value coming in, on top of the fact that the sheer amount of economy coming in means two Penetrators come up in about the same amount of time. I mean, a thousand metal, yeah, that's a lot when you don't have much, but you know, you're dealing with someone with 50 to 80 metal. Well, that's going to take, what, 20 seconds? Not even. Not even 20 seconds. On top of that, the geothermal plant dies. So Google Frog losing even more of their energy economy. Not much, but it makes their reclaim potential far lower. Like, that's the problem. Their energy limits their reclaim, and they need that reclaim if they want to get any economy back. I mean, on top of the fact that the attrition is bad, but they have re that's the one chance they have. They're able to take this re... Oh, even then, that's only about a thousand metal. That's worth less than the two penetrators that just got built. Which will likely tear apart most of that base, too. So, yeah, this is, looks like it's going to be Dimefriend coming in for what might be the final blast. Might be final battle for this entire tournament. I mean, they're moving forward. They got the penetrators in place. They don't have a whole lot of spotters, though. I mean... No, they haven't got a lot of knowledge. Everything's... Is even manually aimed? No, it looks like they're trying to, but yeah, it's basically done. This just a matter of when they choose to engage. Because Google Frog right now, they're like 15 metal per second behind. They have been this whole game. They've I mean, they've been trying. They have the reclaim, but they're only one worker doing the reclaim. Caretakers aren't even doing that much, so... Yeah, it kind of sucks, because the caretakers are doing reclaim. They have a bit more to work with, but then again, of course, there's also the production capacity, and I think the caretaker here would even have much to work with. I feel like, no, I can't even tell, honestly. But yeah, there's the, there's the attack. There's a penetrator coming in here already. The commander goes down one shot, and the halberd's coming in on top just to flank and help finish this off. Actually, overall flank. Everything coming in for Dying Freund. This is a solid, completely solid win here coming in from Google Frog. I'm sorry, from Dying Freund, not for, against Google Frog. And there's not much that Google Frog has left. Their entire army is this... Not even, that's, that's a quill. Those swifts, that's basically it. And Google Frog realizing that problem, throws in the towel. And that is game. And tournament, actually. Congratulations, Dying Frame, for winning. Congratulations, congratulations, Google Frog, on second place. And congratulations to Aenea for third place. And Hokomoko for making it to fourth place. And getting into the top spot. Anyway, and thank you everyone for joining. That was really fun to watch. I'm sure it was fun to play. It's great to have a tournament for this game again, and it is also nice to have it, you know, Swiss setup and all that. That was, that was good. I think five rounds is probably the better option, but Swiss into brackets seems to work well to give everyone a decent chance to play. And also, thank you very much to Aquanim for sorting out this tournament, getting it all organized, getting the format set up, getting the map, everything. I like, couldn't have done it without you. Anyway, I've been Shadow Fury 33 also known as Dominic nowadays, because renames, and... I've, I mean, that's been me, it's been this match, it's been this tournament, thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.